Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and also my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. Did you see how I said host? Did yeah. you hear that? It was disgusting. Was it disgusting? <laughs> yes. Somebody complained that the way I said host was just too much for them and they, yeah. they quit the video, but they commented first and I'm like, awesome. Thank you for that. I love it. People are crazy on the oh internet. My God. The chronically online, also known as raccoons. Yes. <laughs> Stay Just offended. as we are. That's right. <laughs> um, we are here to talk sister wives with you all because, of course, last night TLC Discovery Plus yeah, aired the first part of the Christine and David Woolley wedding special. Yeah. Oh God, all the feels. Me too. All the sparkling in my heart that's going on right now. Yeah. What did you think overall? Well, before you answer that, mm -hmm. I've got to issue a disclaimer to everybody. Please don't forget to hide your wife, hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast, which means we say bad words, we have dumb opinions, and you might get your feelings hurt. Yep. So if you're sensitive, you might want to pick another podcast. But if you're down and you're ready to rock, then hang out in the dumpster with us. Yes. And if you are down and ready to rock, go follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe. And we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash reality TV cringe, where we have two to four bonus audio episodes a month and two to four bonus video episodes a wow. month. Wow. That's so much content. That's a lot of content. Jeez. And if you are watching on YouTube, please don't forget to like, comment, to share, and to subscribe. When I tell you, we read all of your comments, obviously. We do. <laughs> Repeatedly. <laughs> we you, but we really love them. So yes. make sure that you guys interact with us because it really helps us in the algorithm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so before we get into all the things we're going to talk about, like some of your just overall thoughts and your vibe about the wedding special. Well, I'm glad first and foremost, it was on streaming and available the night it aired. Yes. I'm very happy about that. I wish the other lookbacks and talkbacks were on streaming, but I digress. I also thought Christine was beautiful. Yes. I thought her wedding was very sweet or like her wedding decorations and stuff and preparation was very cute. Mm -hmm. All of her daughters are super supportive, which I love. So I thought it was like pretty wholesome. I thought so too. I definitely wonder who's paying for this lavish wedding TLC. because we have 300 people attending. I know. We have a beautiful venue. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of um, wonderful aspects to these nuptials. Oh, so yeah. like, is David Woolley a rich man or is this TLC? I mean, I think David Woolley makes some money, mm -hmm. but I feel like this is probably paid for by TLC slash people. Yeah. So... Well, I did have a takeaway. Yeah. And my thought was, because I watched this twice, my thought, my primary feeling was this is what it would look like if we gave McKelty and Tony more airtime. Yeah. <laughs> and I, for one, would not be down with that <laughs> shit. No way. I mean, as soon as they Ooh. walked into the Airbnb and Were she you announced herself <laughs> and then McKelty proceeded to like compete with everybody for who loves me more. And don't you think I'm funny, mom? And I had more wedding guests than you did, mom. I'm like, oh, my God. I know. Calm down. I will say, though, Tony and McKelty look great. Like they've oh, lost so yes. much weight. They look snatched. Yes. So I'm happy for them that way. But also get off my tv <laughs> yeah i'm like oh i feel like they really want it yeah but, but i don't want it they're so uh yeah. Perform it. Yeah. Performative, you know? You know what i heard i heard that mckelty actually is pausing her patreon content what i think that she's got some things going on in her life right now like so what? i don't know uh, tony don't work <laughs> and i also heard that she's pulling away from lula Roe. whoa of course christine used to do lula Roe along with mary and then Christine left LuLaRoe and she sent all of her clients to her daughter, McKelty. But now McKelty is kind of stepping away from LuLaRoe and also from Patreon. And I'm thinking, well, how are you making your money? But then they also do Plexus. Mm. They also shill Plexus. Interesting. But maybe it's also because she's going to be on season 19 a lot. Maybe. Maybe she's <laughs> maybe filming. She's the TLC oh, chat. God, this is not no. the direction we want to go in <laughs> TLC. No, thank Ugh. you. But like it really makes you think like what is what is the new normal going to be for Sister Wives? I mean, I don't know. I was happy that like Cody and Robin weren't in this episode very much at all. Like we had them with for like one scene and that was great. 
but what else are we going to do? Because I personally don't want to see Christine on TV constantly either yeah, talking about how kids. much she loves David yeah. and her kids. And I'm just like, Ugh. this is great. I'm happy for you. I'm glad for the special. But if season 19 is just all about that, I'm like, I don't know if I want to say and it. And that's why I hate to say it, but I feel like we need Cody and Robin. I know we need the drama. For this to continue to thrive. Otherwise, it's just happy and yeah. great. And <laughs> raccoons can't eat that. We can't eat. That's not garbage. We they need, need garbage. Trash. Absolutely. Yeah. So those are some of my feelings um, and takeaways. Uh, but before we get into the actual episode to just talk about it all, I do understand that somebody reached out to us via SpeakPipe. And by the way, if you want to comment with your mouth and your words and your sounds, yeah. all you have to do is go to SpeakPipe.com slash reality TV cringe. You have up to 90 seconds, honey, to tell us whatever you're thinking about. And we love to hear it. Yeah. So who reached out? We have a message from Rachel and she's got a sister wife's take. Okay. Hey girls, happy new year. It's Rachel again. I'm calling with a new theory about why we're investing in so much knickknack clutter essentially, but that is high dollar and quote unquote an investment. So I recently learned that the reason, one of the reasons that drug dealers wear so much jewelry and like expensive jewelry on their person is that if they're arrested, the police will confiscate it, but it's upon your release, you have to be given back whatever you had. So it's almost like an insurance policy. I'm wondering if the laws of Arizona would preclude any little like Dickensian villages and like David Yearman jewelry, if those would be precluded from a lawsuit. So I know like I live in the state of Florida, they can't take your house in Florida, like no matter how much your house is worth, your primary residence cannot be taken from you in a lawsuit. Because they have so much experience with um, bankruptcy, etc., I would not be the least bit surprised if this is a way of like storing up for the future and kind of like keeping these assets hidden. Like, who's going to go after trinkets in a lawsuit? You know, it might not even be legally eligible, but even if it were, they could say, Really, you're coming after our Christmas village, you're coming after our wedding rings. Like, it would at a minimum be a an optical nightmare. So anyway, this is my newest wild speculation theory. I thought about it for a while. I do think Cody is very um, plotting and they had to have known that eventually these women were going to like get wise and get out of here. So anyway, what do you guys think? That's very interesting. Take. Very interesting. Um, she mentions a lawsuit and I'm not sure what she's referring to with that um, because I think what she's talking about generally, correct me if I'm wrong, is bankruptcy, Yeah, which is not the same as a, a lawsuit, right? It's a, it's a filing that you file and then the trustee either signs off or doesn't. And if the trustee does sign off on your bankruptcy, depending on what kind you're filing, then you might have to liquidate your assets. You might have to turn over some of your things. And that would depend, I think, state to state. Yeah, or maybe like a lawsuit with the wives, like if they were trying mm. to come after for assets and stuff and they had to liquidate their shit, then Cody and Robin could be like, no, not our Dickensian village, not our little trinkets and our bad jewelry. Mm. I don't know how it would uh, how it would turn out in yeah. an actual civil lawsuit between the wives and Cody and Robin, but I did look up bankruptcy exemptions Ooh. to see what they can actually keep if they end up declaring bankruptcy because I'm really curious and because I really do think that this is a potential. This is something that might happen, especially if they remove Cody and Robin from the franchise, which everybody, everybody is calling for TLC to do. Mm -hmm. Although I want to acknowledge that I don't think this franchise goes on without them. No, it won't. But if they lose all their money and have to declare bankruptcy, especially if they're over leveraged, like they have so much debt and they can't pay it off and they declare these are what these are some of the exemptions in Arizona first and foremost the homestead for their primary residence a person's primary residence is exempt provided that it does not have more than four hundred thousand dollars in equity okay so I think right now, what do we got in equity, depending on whether they drew from equity to pay back Janelle, et cetera, I think they've got several hundred thousand dollars in equity. So if they declared bankruptcy, I think they would be compelled to sell their house oh. to liquidate and to, I guess, pay that off. Maybe that's why they're doing renovations on it. Maybe. <laughs> um, Yikes. Also vehicles, mm -hmm. each debtor, so both Cody and Robin may retain one vehicle provided that it does not have more than $15,000 of equity. Okay. So his Lexus, which I know he's trying to sell, they've got that truck. Mm -hmm. They've got the RV. 
an RV. If they oh, own the true. RV, yeah. Isn't there a minivan or is that something from a while I ago? I think so. They've got, but I mean, maybe. They've got a few cars. Maybe some of the kids own the cars and so they wouldn't be able to be taken away, but they would be able to keep two of their vehicles. Any retirement or pension that Cody or Robin has can't be stripped away by bankruptcy, although okay. I cannot imagine a world where Cody has an IRA no. or a 401k. He was depending on the wives for I that. I know. <laughs> I don't think so. Also, so here's where we're, I think uh, we have Rachel wondering. So household goods and furnishings. So paintings, Dickensian villages, supplements, oh and the like. <gasps> so most furnishings and household goods are exempt, are exempt up to $15,000 in the aggregate or $30,000 for married debtors. This includes household electronics, furniture, appliances, and most items a person uses for household purposes. Oh, okay. So, I mean, maybe the Dickensian village and the artwork is not... Going to be able to be seized. Yeah. But that's maybe that's what she was meaning. I like think it can their... be seized. For oh, sure. Oh, it can yeah. be? Yeah. I don't think they would be considered furnishings. O-M-G. And I also think that they have at least 30000 in their appliances, mm -hmm. in their furniture, in their dining table, plus their paintings, whatever's in the basement, honey, and all those boxes, yeah. i.e. firearms. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> that's listed as well. We'll get to it. <gasps> tools of the trade. So tools that a debtor uses to earn a living are exactly provided that their aggregate value does not exceed $5,000. The exemption would be 10000 if they were married. So if he was like mm. a landscaper, for example, and he had his lawnmowers and all of his whatever yeah. landscapers use tools, <laughs> those would be exempted up to five or $10,000. Hmm. Okay. Money in a bank account. 5000 in a single bank account is exempt. If you're married, each spouse can have $5,000 in an account totaling $10,000. Okay. Damn. Any other accounts, I imagine, would have to be drained. Turned over to the trustee jewelry. So, of mm. course, we've got the stallion jewelry. Yep. We've got that shield that Cody's been wearing in the last few episodes. That's worth, I think, a few thousand dollars. Mm. So, in Arizona, wedding rings are exempt if it is worth less than $2,000, 4000 if married. No other jewelry is exempt in Arizona. Oh. If you own expensive jewelry, it will be forfeited to the trustee. Oh my God. So all of us watches too. Does uh -huh. he make his he, Rolo yeah. Rolexes? <gasps> everything. Wow. Mm. wow. Last but not least, firearms. And if you don't know, Cody, I don't know that he's a dealer in firearms. I don't think he's got his license uh -huh. to actually sell firearms, but he was doing some sort of a workaround with kits, I think. But in any, so I would imagine though that he probably has firearms himself. Yeah. All firearms of not more than an aggregate fair market value of $2,000 are exempt. Wow. So all, all firearms of not more than an aggregate of fair market value of 2000 are exempt. What does that mean? Uh, that's kind of <laughs> worded in a weird way. I think I he can keep his firearms, but as soon as it's over $4,000, they would have to be then liquidated. Then they would have to be seized. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Well, if he's buying expensive ass firearms mm -hmm. then or has been screwed. collecting them all these years which i could totally see him yes. being a guy who does that oh yes firearms can be very 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 mm. very expensive and somewhat of an investment so there you have it uh what was her name rachel yeah so these are some of the things you can think about i think the dickensian village would be up for grabs i think all of those paintings would be up for grabs for sure i think everything would be up for grabs for the most part. Oh my god, mm -hmm. to pay off Coyote Pass, dude. If they have They to wouldn't even be able to keep Coyote Pass. They would they have they would be, be compelled to sell it, yep. <sighs> Which I think would put Janelle and Mary in a funky situation because it would be Cody declaring bankruptcy while they are not. Oh my so god. So what would happen if <gasps> Cody and Robin declared but Janelle did not? Like would she be able to keep the land that she has in common with him because I think he'd have to sell it. <sighs> oh my god, that'd be terrible. Mm -hmm. I hope she's figuring out her assets and yes. untangling everything in this off season. I really, Janelle, like, I feel like Mary's probably not as entangled as Janelle is. I feel like Janelle's got her name on fucking everything. So she's got to figure that out. Yep. Yep. <gasps> so good question. Yeah. Thank you. You got the raccoons thinking. Yeah. All right. Now let's get into Sister Wives, season 18, episode 19, Christine and David part one. Yeah. We begin this episode with Christine arriving at the Airbnb. I guess Christine's kids and Janelle's kids are coming into town and they're all going to be staying at this Airbnb. So what did you think? 
I mean, I guess. snooze. I'm like, right. that's great. Okay, we've <laughs> Everybody been here looks before. great. Yeah. It's kind of boring. Like, Christine's like super giddy and happy. Like, there's not much to report here. Right. There's not much here. No, there isn't. We do have Christine and David sitting down on the couch and talking about their origin story yeah. and how they met. And apparently he likes to tell his dates that he's got eight kids and then watch their reaction very closely. And I guess when he did that, Christine paused because that's even more kids than she has. Yeah. Even though she's like, I didn't pause. But then she gets right into all of her bullshit. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I used to be a sister wife and I was the third wife and we have 18 children and now there's a fourth wife and all these things. And he's like, yeah, I know. I know who you are. (laughs) I'm not living under a rock out here. We're in Utah. We know who the brown family is. yeah yeah i thought that was interesting um and this is where it was confirmed by david that two of his sisters are living polygamy they're living yeah. somewhere in mexico which i found to be interesting i was surprised by that mm-hmm. so that's pretty interesting so i'm glad that he's like against polygamy because she because that was christine's next question like you don't want to live that though right And he's like fuck no Mm-hmm. So that's good. Yeah, that's 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 cute. Um, Christine did have a date scheduled for later that evening because yeah. she was just out there partying, living mm-hmm. her best 51-year-old life. But after her date with David, where she looked into his arresting eyes, <laughs> she called off that date. She called her matchmaker and she's like, I'm done. I found my person yeah which is interesting and then the rest is history although i was very surprised to hear how quickly they actually yeah moved yeah to get like he moved she moved in with him after like only three months is or that, something like is that. that so yeah that's what people are saying on reddit that's like okay. the timeline but they've only known each other a total of 11 months right and they're getting married but i'm like who are we to judge? <laughs> I am nobody to judge. <laughs> no, nobody. We both married our partners very quickly. I married your daughter within like nine months. So right, and I think I married my husband within eight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but I, yeah, I thought it was interesting when truly later in the episode was talking to I think Aspen and Isabel about whether to call him. St- Oh, they were asking if she was excited. And yeah. she's like, well, I mean, uh, they've been living together this whole time. I've been living with both of them. I refer to them now as husband and wife. Yeah. I'm like, oh, interesting. I didn't know when they moved in together. Yeah. So they've been together for a while, cohabitating. I, I was surprised by that. I don't know how I feel about her, Christine, moving in with David so soon with Truly as a 13-year-old. But I mean, whatever. David seems like he's nice. Yeah. And I mean, I, ca- I can't hate I can't front because I moved my now husband (laughs) into my home I mean he had his own home but like he was over at my home quite a bit when my daughter was probably 13 to 14 years old yeah but I mean I knew we were going to be together but nonetheless I mean you do what you do when you fall in love I guess so after this we have McKelty and Tony barreling into the Airbnb with their babies nobody by the way are just incredibly cute I mean yeah McKelty makes gorgeous babies totally i mean they are cute and chunky and everything like they're the only thing i want to see out of tony right. McKelty. <laughs> yes one of them has flaming red hair i know the other one's like a blonde mm-hmm. little chubby baby so very cute she comes in everybody's happy to see her and then we cut to cody and robin mm. in flagstaff chopping He's down trees chopping down some tree for what reason i'm trying to think to myself what reason to look like a big dick does man cody have to chop down a tree to look like a big dick man firewood i'm a man is he building a log cabin no <laughs> very <laughs> no. odd and then they sit them both down and i guess the producers ask cody like well christine's getting married what are your thoughts and he's like well i'm happy for her and then kind of goes off on like he tries to go off on a tangent of like, well, she's accusing me of blah, 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 blah. And Robin immediately stops him and is like, no, 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 we're happy for them, right? We're happy for them. Right. Which is interesting. Like, she's like, no, we're on a script here. We have to pretend like we're happy for them. I don't know. I read that situation a little differently. Like, Robin is getting sick of his fucking mouth and him always popping off. He's like, can't we just be happy for these people? Yeah. Like, I don't want to be out here, like, looking like we're bitter and passive aggressive. 
aggressive. I just want to wish them well and leave it at that. Shut your fucking mouth, Brody. <laughs> That's how I took that personally. I was thinking that it was like, she's like, dude, we need to stop because we need to focus on our image here. We need to do damage control and pretend like we care. Interesting. Ultimately, he tells some sort of story about how Christine has told the kids that Cody found his soulmate. So now I want to set out and find mine. And Cody says something like, you know, I really I hope that she does. I hope that they're happy. Mm, I don't buy it at all. But I mean, that doesn't sound like an accusation, which is how you started that sentence. So what is it that you were actually about to say? That's what I want to know. I think Robin knew he was about to show his ass. Oh, 100%. He was going to go on again about how she's talking shit about me to the kids. He was going to say something like that. Right. Next, we have um, hair and makeup at the Airbnb. This is where we have the older girls with Truly and having the conversation. I only mention this because uh, I think on the couch, Christine mentions that she also talked to Truly. um, Like, what do you think about living with a man full time? Yeah. She's like, it's never happened before. We've (laughs) never had to live like this with a father ever. She's like, I'm nervous about it. And. Christine's like, well, I am too. And Truly's like, well, now I'm even more nervous. Right. <laughs> <laughs> truly is adorable. But that's got to be weird because mm-hmm. truly, well, in no pun intended, but really and actually for the last, I don't know, seven, 10 years, Christine has been an almost single mother. Yep. The only time Cody comes over is to like check off the box on the schedule, stay till 7 p.m. and then bounce on out of there. I know. So to have a man around full time would have to be like a real adjustment. Oh, for sure. For all of them. For Christine and Truly mm-hmm. and everybody else. I don't know. It must be weird. But it might, I mean, maybe David's hella chill. Maybe uh, he he's seems just like, like whatever. He's pretty chill. He seems like a nice dude. I think the people around them keep saying stuff like, you know, Christine's a really big personality. And so is David. Yeah. And they're both leaders. And I was actually kind of wondering, like, when we get to the rehearsal out at the Red Cliffs Lodge or whatever mm-hmm. it is. And Christine starts taking charge and giving everybody instructions. I'm just like, "Mm, she's pretty loud. Yeah. And she kind of drowns him out. Mm -hmm. If he's somebody who is accustomed to being a leader and taking charge, I'm like, "Mm." I know. And he doesn't seem like he has that big of a personality to me. He's a Capricorn, too. So I'm just like, I don't know. I haven't seen that yet. But maybe we're going to see more of him in season 19. So we'll get to actually see more of his actual character. Right. Um, then we cut over to Mary. She's in Parowan. She's putting up her ghosts. Yeah. What did you think of, of that? Well, the producers are asking her, like, do you know that Christine's getting married? And she's like, yeah, I do. I don't know when. I'm happy for her, but I'm also devastated that this is what's happened to our family. Mm-hmm. And that's essentially it. I kind of felt bad that she wasn't invited. Me too. But I mean, I get it because Christine said she didn't want to invite her if there's still weird energy from the divorce and everything so i get it and then i think this is where mary says you know christine deserves to be happy and i hope that that happens for me too yeah and i'm like yes queen yes i hope so too yes yeah i just felt that was kind of a lonely scene her out on her deck or patio or porch or whatever hanging up her ghosties and i'm like who are you living do you have friends i know you have jen i know you do friday nights with jen um, but do you know people in this area? You seem like somewhat of a cosmopolitan person who likes to mm-hmm. travel and have experiences and adventures and you're just stuck in Parowan. Are you okay, Mary? I know. I'm like, I wonder if Leon visits her ever because Leon's at Christine's wedding. I don't right. know if you saw. I didn't see Leon. Yeah, they're Audrey. there. No, yeah. I didn't see them. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, that's cool that they're visiting and being there for Christine. But I'm like, do you visit your mom, though? Like, I don't ever see you there. Yeah. And your mom's lonely. So. I hope so. Um, we get then to the rehearsal and Janelle and her kids are there yeah. and it's really nice seeing Gabe and seeing Maddie and, and Caleb. Hunter. Did Caleb groom Maddie though? Yeah. Did Caleb groom her? Every time I see Caleb, I'm like, you look nice, You're but I old. mean, are you a groomer? Yeah. I don't know. Mm. Caleb's there. Maddie's there. They're kids. Um, we see Peyton and all the kids around and it just yeah. seems like a lovely mo- moment. And I'm telling you that venue is stunning. It is beautiful. Moab, Utah. I'm like, I want to go visit. I feel like I've been to Moab, but I don't know. Maybe I saw it in a movie. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, so they're going through the rehearsal at the next part and they're walking up to the platform. David does a combat tumble. He I seems know. like he's a jokester. Being but this is where we kind of get some information about Christine's dad, who apparently has been sick for the last 15 years. I'm not sure with what. Probably cancer. Yeah. Really? Probably. Why? That's a long time to have cancer. It's probably like prostate cancer or something. Oh, my God. I know. So Peyton's going to have to walk her most of the way, and then they're yeah. going to fetch her father to walk her to the steps, and then she's going to walk up to the platform to be with David. There's not going to be anybody else there. They're not going to have bridesmaids. They're not going to have groomsmen. It's just going to be them, too, and the efficient and Jesus on the platform. Of course, which I think is actually very sweet. Mm -hmm. I like how Christine was like, I've shared a marriage for yeah. a million years, so I ain't sharing the stage with nobody. Yeah. True Aries fashion. Absolutely. Then we have the scene with her mother, Annie. I yeah. think she's talking with Isabel. Aspen and Isabel. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. This part got me misty. Yeah. Because um, she was not able to attend Christine's first marriage. And we cut over to Christine explaining that you had to be a member of the church in order to attend. Yeah. Which I didn't really know the timeline of when her mother left. Although I guess it was when Christine was like 19. So that yeah. would track. Um, and I always remember the, the feeling around Annie in the series. Like she was always kind of mousy mm -hmm. and in the background, somewhat overpowered yeah. by Christine's big personality. I don't know. And the way she cried and just said, my daughter's so incredible. She's been incredible to me. She deserves to be happy. She's one of the best people in the world. I am so freaking happy for her. Just... Made me miss my mom. I don't I know. know. Made me miss my mom because my mom used to say stuff like that about me. She's like, I'm so fucking proud of you. You are so wonderful. Look at what you've done with your life. And I don't know. I hope Christine really realizes what a beautiful mom she has. Oh, totally. And it's funny because when I was watching this scene, I was thinking back to some of the earlier seasons because I've just been watching some of the older seasons in my off time just because I'm obsessed. And I was actually at the part in like season eight or season nine or something when Annie moves in with Christine in Las Vegas. And she talks about how she wasn't able to be at Christine's wedding and how she missed out on a lot of years with Christine because apparently Christine wasn't even allowed to talk to her mom for like several years after she left the Why? church. Because, because she the left church? the church. Yeah. Because they were in a cult. <laughs> I don't know. I guess my feeling about it at the time, although I didn't watch all those in between seasons, mm -hmm. but my feeling about it was like also that Christine judged her mom. Yes, because she was a part of that church, and she. And but then when things start, they became public and everything. Then she started working on her relationship with her mom a little bit, and she's like, "Okay, this is stupid. Let me talk to my mom." Right. But yeah, back when she was younger, she didn't have any contact with her mom, which oh is my so gosh. shitty. Yeah, poor Annie. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> After this, um, we cut on over to Cody, who gives his uh, recollection of his wedding day to Christine. He's like, I had a th thousand yard stare. Mm. You know, we were not very happy. He did mention that Janelle and Mary weren't really in a great place at yeah. the time. So things just weren't going great. And it wasn't a great day. And so Christine really deserves to have a great day with a guy who's totally into her. I don't know. It seemed genuine to me when he said that. It felt rehearsed a little bit for me okay. because I'm just like, I can't imagine that you actually feel that way after we've seen your behavior the last three years on the show. Like, it's just he's been so angry and bitter this yeah. whole entire time. So I'm just like, did you really work through that? Or are you just saying that for the cameras because you're concerned about your image now? And when you think about the lookbacks, which mm -hmm. were filmed, somebody told us in our comments, thank you, um, Investigatory yes. Raccoons, it was filmed, I think, in November or December of 2023. So just a couple of months ago. He's still bitter. Yeah. He's still really fucking triggered, activated, and upset about Christine. So yeah. presuming, I'm presuming that he filmed this type of a statement around the time of her wedding. So I'm like, what's going on? So you're just faking it. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Next, we have the boat ride down the Colorado River, honey. When we get to see Christine chugging a beer, I she's know. drinking now. I know. She got tattoos. Yeah. She's fucking. She's a rebel. She's partying, honey. <laughs> and we get to see everybody there. We see Hunter. We see Caleb. We see Maddie. We see all the kids. We see uh, David's family. And it just yeah. seems like a really fun, happy time oh super super sweet and christine's just having a ball everybody's having a great time and then at some point janelle gets up to have a speech which i'm just like <gasps> that warmed my heart because mm -hmm. uh, janelle's like 
getting weepy and she's just like i love you guys you're great like i'm so happy for you and i'm so grateful that i'm part of the deal i know i'm like oh my god that reminded me of my daughter uh, i don't really? know why i was feeling so emotional and oh, sentimental that's like sweet. just how she's part of my deal like yeah. she's part of my package deal and how Janelle's like, oh my gosh, I have somewhere in the family. I'm part of somebody's package deal. Thank you for for letting me be that. Oh, so fucking sweet. Really nice. Very emotional. Yeah. After the boat ride, we get to the shore. And this is where <laughs> we meet Christine's dad, Rex. Yeah. Oh my God. He gives her a hug. I know. He's like, that guy ain't shit. Not David, but Cody. <laughs> He's bawling right now. Back in fucking Flagstaff. He's like, how could she have left me? I've lost the best thing that i ever had in my life preach dad. rex just goes right in and i'm here for it yes and i think he whispered something to her and he was like you know i was so unhappy that you were married to cody and i'm so glad that you're mm -hmm. out of that and mm -hmm. you're happy and i get to see that i think that's very special like mm -hmm. no wonder she wanted to have such a big wedding and a big old shindig because she never got to have a wedding she was fucking wearing like a tarp basically with a lackluster wedding oh, is what God. cody called it yeah i just felt bad for her so i'm glad that she gets to have this big yes. old like parade as much as it is like she is a lot in her energy but she's allowed to be because she's happy can you imagine being her father for like 26 years watching his Ugh. daughter be like not second but third in the family like being sad the entire time yeah. being married to such a piece of shit as cody brown right and he's probably a big man back in his days probably a big man because i think payton probably takes after him he seems like a tall motherfucking guy yep cowboy kind of a guy and like yep. he's probably so thrilled for christine and he even tells her something like you know it passes time passes so quickly you know for the rest of your life you're going to be happy he's going to be taking taking care of you make sure you enjoy it yeah and she says something like i know dad i'm 51 <laughs> and so it's kind of sweet because yeah. it doesn't matter how old she is that's still her papa that's still her dad and for him that's still his baby yeah really and how sweet. special it is that she gets to have this memorialized like mm -hmm. i was also thinking about that when i was watching the earlier seasons like with baby truly i'm like how cool it is it that she gets to have all of these memories with baby truly on film forever from the moment of her birth on and then she gets to have her wedding and everything mm -hmm. and all these special moments with her parents like that's really cool it is it's special then we have the day of the wedding christine arrives at the airbnb it's like truly like bust in through the door and she's like what's up everybody here i am I'm just like she's pretty she's pretty she's cool great. i like her yeah um, and so they're getting ready and um, we have a scene with Aspen doing Isabel's hair, mm -hmm. talking about whether they're supposed to call David their stepfather. Yeah, and Aspen's like, I ain't calling him that. Which, I mean, that's fair. They're adults now. Like, right. It, he's not really like a father figure at that point in time. Probably not. And, and I don't think he'd be the type of person to demand mm -hmm. that from them. No. So they ultimately say, well, I mean, he's just family. Yeah. And I'm sure he would be like, just call me David. It's not a big deal. Right. Um, we also see David meeting with the guys in his suite. Mm -hmm. He's trying to get his shirt. He doesn't remember whether he's <laughs> supposed to wear rust or whether he wears plum. And Tony's like, these are dumb colors. They're really hard <laughs> to find these colors. <laughs> My God, Tony, leave. And then I got a glimpse of Mitch. And yeah. as a heterosexual male, I mean, female, <laughs> I mean, whatever. I was just like, what happened to Mitch? This glow up. I remember when he got married in his kilt and I'm like, okay, whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. whatever, yeah. But I don't know. He like got really tall. Uh -huh. He grew out his hair. Mm -hmm. He lost a little weight. And I'm like, hi, Papa. Hey, he's handsome. He is handsome. And then Aspen, gorgeous. I know. Isabel, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. McKelty, gorgeous i know this family's got some good genes even Peyton, i was like damn yeah. dude you are fucking tall mm -hmm. he's a strapping young man yes he is and then when the girls got their dresses on they yeah. had like different shades of like lilac red and, and, and pinkies mm -hmm. i'm like oh it's beautiful so pretty all of these girls looked so beautiful yep we have that scene with maddie Mm -hmm. and she is trying to say how much she loves David for Christine, and she starts crying, and yeah. she's like, I don't want to cry. And my thought watching this was, first of all, how sweet and how lovely, but I also really noticed how resistant she is to be vulnerable 
on camera, yep. which got me thinking like, wow, like these kids probably have some trauma left over for being so terribly exploited totally for years and years that she doesn't even want to cry on camera and yep. give that bit of herself away oh for sure and she's janelle's kid and janelle doesn't like to be emotional right. either so you right. have all of that on top of it but i did really like that she was there and just like getting emotional about it and just showing her support for christine Me i just too. love it it's like such a good fuck you to cody and mm-hmm. robin also that janelle's kids and everybody they're all supporting christine it's great also i love the fact that this is going to be the biggest most beautiful mm-hmm. wedding that the family has ever seen and yep. the fact that it wasn't robin's wedding Ugh. the fact that it's christine's wedding is just a beautiful thing it's so great and i was wondering to myself do robin and cody watch these episodes do you think they're gonna watch oh these? you know they're watching really these. Oh, i think they're going they to make are. a point to not watch it. no dude I we think don't they're care bitter as fuck it. I think they're gonna watch it really yeah because if I'm Robin and I'm the last one standing with the prize that is Cody Brown <laughs> and I'm looking upon this lavish beautiful breathtaking wedding and all of the family that refuses to spend any time with me because of me if I'm watching that I'm I'm dying inside oh totally she is so jealous so envious because Cody can't give her that. He's fucking broke Mm-mm. as hell. Mm-mm. He's on his way to being broke as hell. <laughs> they're going to start tap dancing. I'm telling oh, you something. Yeah. They're going to start trying to manufacture drama and yep. a storyline because what else do they have besides Cody's unhinged ranting? I don't know. It's either going to be that or they're going to pretend to be good people. Like they're going to just is completely boring. switch. Yep. Which is boring. And but they which... care about their image. They're narcs. Uh, they want people to like them. Really? I don't think (laughs) Cody has cared the last three seasons whether anybody fucking likes him. He has been acting like a hysterical person. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just censoring myself. He's been acting like a monster. Oh, yeah. On camera. He knows it. He even said, I think at some point in this episode, he's like, I've been pissed off for three years. Mm -hmm. So he recognizes it. Sorry, Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to cut you off. Robin cares. Yeah. So I think Robin's going to make him care. And be like, dude, I'm getting reamed online right now. Like, we are Mm -hmm. all getting fucked because of your antics so let's just pretend like we're good people and like we're happy for and then them. that ruins the show like <laughs> and I'm, I'm just saying like we're watching these um specials together we're obviously all ve- we're all most of us are women here we got some men but like we all get it we want this for christine she really deserves it so we're gonna watch these episodes we're gonna talk about it but if you want to project this out for an entire season of christine being happy janelle being happy and cody and robin being happy nobody's gonna watch <laughs> Truly, nobody's going to watch. I mean, yeah. What do we want? We want drama. We want destruction. We want honesty. Like, yep. And that's the thing. It wouldn't even take that much. All it would really require is for them to start telling the whole truth and also to start being litigious oh, and filing sure. some lawsuits and, and opening the books. Like That is really all it would take for us to be all in. Yep. But if what they're going to do, and this production house is the fucking worst. I know. Ugh. If what they're going to do is just... Give us another season where we're watching Christine fall in love with David after we already watched them get married. Oh my god. And I heard swear. about their origin story. I mean, I don't I don't really know how we save this show. Right. Like nobody wants to watch that. Even these wedding special this wedding special, I found myself getting a little annoyed with Christine. Like I'm glad that she's happy. I'm not, you know, ragging on her for that at all, but I felt like she was being a little performative. She was being a little petty because she knows christy uh cody and robin are probably watching this and she wants to show off and she wants to be flamboyant about it and that's great but like i don't want to see that for the entirety of season 19 either like i I really don't that's great that you're happy and you're in love that's awesome but it just feels i don't i mean I, I agree. I don't want to I don't think that's going to make a great show either no. just watching her and David date. But at the same time, I don't agree with you about how she was acting in these this episode because I think she's so in love. I mean, the times when she just dipped into and curled into his chest, yeah. like when she bites her lower lip, like when she's just dreamy eyed looking at him like she is so happy and so in love with him. And I was just like, I really felt it. I don't think that was performative. I think that she's 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 an older McKelty, honestly. 
I think that. she's she's the older McKelty. She tries to be the life of the party. Mm-hmm. She tries to be big and bombastic. That's her happy place where she wants to be. It doesn't always translate to the people that are watching. Yeah. But I don't know. I think she's really, I think it's genuine. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is genuine, but I think there's coming, like there's some. You bitter Betty. I am a little bitter. <laughs> I don't know. Like maybe I'm jaded, but I'm just like. Why are you jaded at 27 years know. old, happily married for seven <laughs> years? Why would you be jaded at somebody else's story tale, like fairy tale ending? I don't know. I was talking with Ethel about it. She felt the same way. She's like, Christine's annoying the fuck out of me. Really? Do you guys yeah. feel the same way out there? Were I you annoyed? Know. I, I mean, mean, she's annoying. Yeah, that's McKelty's what I'm annoying. Yeah. But I also think. She's happy. She's happy. And I saw the performance during the season. Yeah. I saw her going out of her way to be petty and to make jabs and to kind of set up scenarios where people start talking. Yeah. But I didn't see a lot of that in this episode. But that's just me. Yeah. I mean, I'm like I said, I'm happy for her. So like, that's great. And like, she's allowed to be too much and she's allowed to be a little over the top. Like, that's cool and everything. I just don't want to see that mm-hmm. for the entirety of season. Eight. Yeah. And that's, that's what get, that's what has me worried. Yeah. That's really what has me worried. Yeah. Well, we end um, part one with them heading on over to the venue. Again, beautiful bridesmaid dresses. And we see Christine about to go into the or she goes into the John Wayne room but then she comes out and she sits down on the floor and she's just taking a minute for herself and she's like you know what this feels so wonderful I hope every bride feels the same way on their wedding day and she just seems really happy yeah I'm I'm excited to see like the actual wedding like I'm sure we're gonna see a lot of it we're gonna see the whole thing we'll probably see their vows which I'm kind of excited for maybe we'll see the after party although did you see the preview Uh with her grinding on David well we had addressed this before I'm like I feel like Christine is giving that 60 year old man a lap dance oh she is she grinding up on him with well yeah you think they've been fucking of course. in the house with Trudy? Yes, yes. Oh, God. Yes. Oh, God. I do. I mean, you asked the question. I would have to answer honestly. <gasps> Absolutely, they are fucking. But my thing is, she moved into the town home in September of 2022. Mm-hmm. She meets David in November. Something like that. Because she said it was December, but that was a lie. So November of 2022. They start dating and they're immediately committed to each other. When does she leave the town home to move in with David or does David... David move into her townhome. When does this happen? Raccoons? I think she moves in with him a few months later. So maybe she kept her townhome and she's renting it out. That would be the smart thing to do. I think she was renting it in the first place. So she gave up her lease or she sublet it. Mm. But then they purchased a home that wasn't ready to occupy. Yeah. I don't know when they moved into that home. So like, where were they living in the interim? Oh my God. Are we going to have to see all of that? Yes. <laughs> we are gonna, we're going to see her move in David uh. very quickly. Everybody's going to get to judge that for sure. And we'll probably hear from Cody and see what he thinks about that. Totally. I mean, David's house is probably going to be like an upgrade though, compared to everything that Christine's been in. Cause he's got money. He's got his own construction business. Mm-hmm. He's not just some bogus entrepreneur like Cody. Right. right. So, I mean, maybe we'll get to the coins then. Like maybe Christine will talk about maybe what money she has or whatever. Maybe we'll get to see Janelle untangle her assets. I'm just telling you, TLC. I mean, we stand before a crossroads. (laughs) Now, if we go down this road and we just talk about how happy everybody is and how Christine is living her great life and cooking her beautiful meals and how Janelle is gardening and how Mary is doing her B&B, nobody cares. No. Like we're happy. We're as people, as human beings, we're very happy for them. Yeah. But as viewers, we're going to start snoring. Yeah. The other road is to encourage these folks to start opening books, having conversations, telling the truth, and opening up to the audience. Now, if you yeah. go down that road, this franchise has legs. Like yeah. you could just this will be our new normal. We could have maybe two to five more years of great content. Yes. And great ratings. Yes. But it all depends on you. Yep. And same thing with Cody and Robin. Like if we're just going to see them make fake storylines with their stupid kids and like it's going to be all a bunch of bullshit as opposed to them being honest about what they're doing with their house, mm-hmm. the renovations, mm-hmm. if they're going to declare bankruptcy. Like we want to see all this shit. Yes. And What's we deserve it. We yep. deserve it. Yes. 18 fucking seasons, 19 seasons of this crap. The investments we have made. <laughs> the, the sacrifices, sacrifices we, we have, have made. made. <laughs> to love you. <laughs> for real. All right. The preview for next week. We have Christine putting on her dress. She's so in love with it. And I just have to say, I got to be a hater. That dress is too loose. <laughs> I know. 
but it's somebody really need, big. Somebody needed to. I don't, what do you? What do you call? Take it, it in. Nip it, tuck it. Yeah. In. Something needs to be a little. I didn't like the dress. To be quite honest with you, but she looked pretty though. I love that she loves the dress. Yes. God, such a hater. I know. We <laughs> see her walking down the beautiful aisle to mm-hmm. her loving man up on that uh. platform. He can't wait oh, to marry her. Yeah. He wanted to elope. Oh yeah. And so she's she's walking to him. We see Cody talking about his wedding to Christine and Robin shuts him up like shut the shut shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Do you ever shut up, man? <laughs> And then we see the sexy reception. Yeah. Oh, with Hunter partying. Everybody's partying. Everybody's having a great time. I just love that we're in our liquor era. Yes. We're in our intoxicato era where we get to yep. see all these Mormons just having <laughs> fun, honey. Drinking, getting Let tattoos. Loose. Looking. Having a great time. Yes. The Browns. They're just like us. <laughs> they, are. <laughs> they are just like us. Well, any final thoughts before we can? I can't believe we got... I, I, 45 to 50 minutes out of that episode we were I was talking worried before about we did it. this we're like how are we gonna um talk about all of this yeah. there was not much there Mm-mm. i'm hoping like next wedding special is gonna be better there's gonna be more cringy moments with that lap dance oh, and yeah. all of that she's yeah. gonna be all over david oh god give it to me Dude, i love that shit you know their honeymoon they're just gonna be banging it the out. more cringe the better do you think he um has to use like cialis or viagra or anything i, I mean, mean he's like almost 60 yeah i have no idea how how that works but i'm just going to err on the side of he's probably got some blue pills mm-hmm. he wants to make a night of it yeah it can't just be like you know one and done and hopefully my dick gets hard or right. maybe it's like halfway hard and i've got to try and shove <laughs> it in there and move it around <laughs> a little bit like he wants to make sure like i can perform one more wedding yeah night. so maybe some blue pills give her the night of her life honey oh my god do you think he fucks her real good you think he like eats her box and stuff? And I think he probably has to eat her box. Yeah. Because I don't know that he fucks her really good. What do you really? Well, I don't know. I just can't imagine a 60 year <laughs> Maybe so. I mean, it's not that much older than me, truth be told. And I'm a freak. I mean, okay. Ew, I don't want to Your mother-in-law is a freak, honey. I don't want to hear about it. I got some stuff I could tell you Ew. and teach you. Gross. Let it be known. <laughs> no. But I just can't see this dude. I don't know. Maybe he's fucking freaky, dude. Maybe. Sometimes the older men, like, listen, I work in the medical field and I'm scared scheduling exams for all these old men and some exams we have to tell them no sex for three days and i'm telling you these 75 80 year old 85 i had a 90 year old guy complain to me he's like really no sex for three days i was like yes sir he's like wow i'm gonna have to tell my wife he was dead ass he, serious he was joking no he, he was, was just dead ass playing serious. with the young chippy on the phone some there's of these, absolutely no way but some serious. of the 75 year olds and stuff they're banging well, but what about their hips yeah but they can still they lie down their pelvis bones <laughs> they lie down. that's shocking to I'm me i mean you. i don't know but i mean i can tell you that at my ripe old age i'm sexually <laughs> active okay i'm sexually Ew. active babe probably get it in Gross. more than you i'm just saying Gross. so i mean it's just so i could see i mean i don't know i could i don't know girl uh, in summation <laughs> i hope christine got a deep dick in on the night of her nuptial she yep. deserves it and you know cody was terrible in bed oh 100 after he got his children from her mm-hmm. it was just pump and dump yeah and keep it moving yep. if that Pity sex, obligation sex. He wasn't eating the box. No, no, no. foreplay, no, no sensual seduction. interesting positions. Mm-mm. No, like um, sex swing. Oh god, none of that. No pegging. No, no toys. Do you think Christine's getting freaky? Do you think she's learned a few things after um, meeting yeah. him? I mean, I don't know. I think so. I, I hope mean, so. I hope so. Me too. Maybe they're doing some Kama Sutra like I'm Jenny and Sumit on 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> well, so we'll be back next week to obviously wrap up the Sister Wives season. I know. Oh my gosh. God. Before we go into Sister Wives Rewinds mm-hmm. after that. We will be back later this week though to talk about 90 Day Fiance which finally returns. Thank I God know. after three weeks off or something like that. How dare they? Don't they know this is our job? God. We'll be back to talk about that so make sure you guys return any your sister wives fans and you're not following our 90 day fiance i don't get it you should be it's really funny I don't those ones are really great they're, really, they're unhinged <laughs> they're pretty funny. crazy she drinks i do well yeah. i'm not i'm dry january yeah you're not so gonna I'm be drinking, drinking but, but damn it's still funny i love to drink when i watch 90 day fiance but come back for that we'd love to have you um and is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons beatrice well if you love our podcast you better be going onto your favorite podcast platform and leaving us a glowing five star review ah! it really helps us grow the pod so ah! thank you so much and uh, until next time please don't forget that we've got nothing but love for you and peace out bye bye guys